In the quest to reduce car traffic, lower transportation costs, and improve delivery efficiency, Serve Robotics is on the job. Its delivery robots are already transforming last-mile delivery in urban areas. Since they're designed for short-distance deliveries, carrying up to 50 pounds at speeds of 7 miles per hour, with 80% autonomy, operating daily from central hubs, performing thousands of deliveries, mainly food for partners like Uber Eats, 7-Eleven, Walmart, and Delivery Hero. Since its 2022 pilot launch, Serve's robots have already completed over 100,000 deliveries for over 2,500 restaurants, resulting in larger pilot projects, some of which turn into full-scale partnerships, like the first notable one with Uber to deploy up to 2,000 robots by the end of 2025, an impressive goal that requires us to look into the achievements and capabilities behind Serve's ambitions, as well as logistical bumps and financial obstacles that could arise on its journey to deliver a persistently profitable business. Having had 25% monthly growth since 2022 and reaching reliability of over 90%, Serve emphasizes full-stack development, from custom drivetrain and hardware to AI models enabling Level 4 autonomy, so that robots can operate without human supervision in defined environments. Since they're built to navigate complex sidewalk environments with AI models trained to detect surfaces, pedestrians, traffic, and dynamic obstacles. Priority is also placed on design for public acceptance, aiming for robots that feel familiar, considerate, and non-intrusive. Another way of saying cute and or calm robots that don't scream Terminator. In addition to third-party delivery platforms like Uber Eats, faster scalability is being achieved by partnerships like those with KiwiBot, Starship, and Coco. They generate revenue via delivery fees, hourly usage, and robot-based advertising. Plans to license tech and use delivery data for city infrastructure insights may also provide future revenue streams. Serve is making progress to address challenges that can arise on the road to sustained profitability, namely the need to increase the number and diversity of collaborations to reduce heavy reliance on companies like Uber, which made up 71% of revenue in 2023. This dilemma of sorts arises from Serve's origins as a spinoff from Uber in 2021, which still left Uber Eats as Serve's largest customer and investor, allowing Serve to gain access to Uber partners and customers in exchange for Uber gaining Serve's delivery services on its platform, meaning Uber could still be a critical collaborator driving the bulk of growth for the foreseeable future. A double-edged sword, high concentration risk, high growth reward situation, if you will. For example, Serve's expansion into the Miami metro area helps the overall national growth strategy as it involves expanding Serve's partnership with Shake Shack and a new partnership with Mr. O1 Extraordinary Pizza. Yet it still involves customers ordering from select locations in Miami Beach and Brickell that may receive their orders via Serve's robots through Uber Eats. Nonetheless, the Miami launch builds on Serve's success in Los Angeles and aligns with similar expansion goals in the Dallas-Fort Worth region. Miami Beach and Brickell, with their dense populations and busy commercial areas, provide an ideal setting for testing and scaling sustainable robotic delivery. Especially since city officials and local stakeholders were consulted to ensure a smooth rollout. Along the same lines, Serve launched its robotic delivery service in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area in partnership with Uber Eats, operating in uptown Dallas neighborhoods Pearl, State Thomas, West Village, and South Routh serving over 22,000 households. Customers ordering through Uber Eats in these areas may receive meals from local restaurants, including Katai, via autonomous delivery. The rollout also extends Serve's national partnership with Shake Shack to Dallas. Interestingly, CEO Dr. Ali Kashani noted the launch could create local jobs in operations and robot maintenance. Continuing the countrywide conquest, Serve reached the sidewalks in the Atlanta metro area, marking its fourth major market following successful expansions in Los Angeles, Miami, and Dallas-Fort Worth. Again, this rollout is part of its collaboration with Uber Eats and reflects its broader goal of deploying 2,000 delivery robots across the U.S. by the end of the year. Bringing robot delivery to Midtown, Old Fourth Ward, and Downtown Atlanta to over 50,000 residents through the Uber Eats platform opening access to local favorites like Real Tacos and Panko Chicken, as well as national partner Shake Shack. CEO and co-founder Dr. Ali Kashani emphasized Atlanta's significance as one of the Southeast's largest and fastest growing markets, calling it a strategic next step in the company's nationwide expansion.
With Atlanta's car-dependent infrastructure and growing tech presence, Serve's zero-emission delivery robots are positioned to reduce congestion and improve last-mile logistics efficiency. And like in Miami, Serve also noted its proactive collaboration with local stakeholders to ensure a smooth integration into the community, which it expects will generate new jobs in operations and maintenance while stimulating the local economy. As a whole, Serve Robots can now serve nearly 2 million people across its five metro areas, representing a more than five-fold increase in reach since the start of the year. These figures will only increase as the fifth major metro market expansion just kicked off in Chicago. Autonomous sidewalk delivery service to the Chicago metropolitan area marks Serve's first venture into the U.S. Midwest. Now, Serve's fleet will begin serving 14 neighborhoods in Chicago, including Austin, Lakeview, Lincoln Park, Logan Square, and near North Side, offering autonomous deliveries from over 100 local restaurants. The service promises to provide customers with reliable, contact-free delivery from some of Chicago's most beloved eateries, whether it's deep-dish pizza, Chicago-style hot dogs, or late-night snacks. Chicago was chosen as an ideal location for this expansion due to its extensive pedestrian infrastructure and vibrant dining scene. And like in the previous four cities, Serve collaborated closely with local partners and community stakeholders to ensure that its robots integrate smoothly into the city's bustling urban landscape and food culture. Additional U.S. markets are expected to be announced soon as the National Growth Plan chugs along. In the meantime, existing markets like Los Angeles see additional partnerships like the one with Little Caesars for pizza delivery. Again, this will be facilitated through the Uber Eats platform. It allows customers ordering from participating Little Caesars locations in LA to receive their food via Serve's third-generation autonomous delivery robots. These robots are specifically designed for food delivery, equipped with expanded cargo bins that can hold up to four 16-inch pizzas, along with sides and beverages, while maintaining the appropriate food temperature throughout transit. Little Caesars, the third largest pizza chain in the U.S., views this collaboration as part of its broader commitment to innovation and sustainability. Trish Husell, the company's VP of Innovation, noted that robotic delivery supports their goal of implementing technology-forward solutions that also reduce environmental impact. Likewise, Uber Eats sees the partnership as a step forward in making delivery more convenient and eco-friendly. Megan Jensen, head of autonomous delivery operations at Uber Eats, highlighted that the integration with Serve's technology improves reliability and sustainability across the delivery network. Providing further reason, the intertwined relationship with Uber won't be rapidly unraveling. When it comes to technical capabilities, Serve enhanced its connectivity after it acquired the assets of Phantom Auto Inc. and its Swedish subsidiary Voices AB in a deal valued at approximately $5.75 million in cash. Voices, founded in 2014 and headquartered in Norrköping, Sweden, is known for its advanced ultra-low latency video streaming and teleoperation technology. It will enhance Serve's autonomy stack with infrastructure that enables real-time connection to autonomous systems over networks like 4G, LTE, and 5G. Voices' platform, which delivers glass-to-glass -glass latency as low as 50 milliseconds, uses advanced bandwidth regulation, multi-link redundancy, and proprietary video compression. The system is designed to ensure reliable and responsive operation in dense urban settings key for delivery robots navigating sidewalks and city streets. Serve CEO Dr. Ali Kashani emphasized that the technology has already been deployed in the company's production fleet and will be a critical enabler of safe, efficient operations. As Serve expands across the U.S., Voices will continue to function as an independent entity under Serve's Software and Data Services Division. On the path to profitability, the proverbial revenue road consistently rises. Yet delayed profitability timelines are projected by pessimists because of continued net losses, whereas Serve's supporters stick along for the ride, citing strong unit economics and potential for AI-driven delivery dominance – particularly as the Serve fleet keeps multiplying to raise delivery capacity to meet the demand of its five major metro markets and beyond. Related optimism stems from third-generation robot production steadily scaling up, proliferating the advantages of faster robots with greater range and up to 65% lower production costs compared to the preceding generation. Additionally, recent quarters consistently reported a strong liquidity position with a cash balance exceeding debt, 
hovering close to $200 million thanks to an over $90 million capital raise earlier in the year. Extending its operational runway through the end of 2026, allowing it to self-fund equipment investments, avoiding the need for costly financing, providing fiscal breathing room for the targeted 2,000-unit fleet, and the broader initiative of scaling operations and furthering its technology development. However, it's worth noting that even though gross margins have reached 40%, cost of revenues rose by upwards of $1 million due to fleet scaling and market entry costs. Operating expenses reached $13.5 million, with R&D remaining the largest investment area. Not too much of an issue. If that leads to operational metrics continuing to rapidly scale without compromising quality, such as having delivery volume increase by over 75%, while delivery completion rates remain near 99.8%, an achievement that was already reached in earlier quarters, alongside daily active robots and supply hours, which increased by over 100% respectively, serving as proof of serve's ability to maintain service quality during rapid expansion. Additionally, efforts to monetize its software and data platform have progressed, with new partnerships expected to generate recurring revenue, Customers in this segment now include a top European automaker and a middle-mile autonomous trucking firm. The software segment shows extra promise after it extended capabilities, following the aforementioned acquisition of Voices platform, further contributing to confidence in reaching the long-term revenue goals of $60 to $80 million annualized by 2026. CFO Brian Reed noted that while profitability remains a challenge, heavy investment in automation and AI can make each robot smarter and more efficient. Moreover, ServeNow counts over 2,500 restaurant partners in its network, up from 1,500 in Q1 at the start of the year, and more than eight times the number it had at the same time last year. It's also reported meaningful progress in forming enterprise partnerships, though details remain under wraps for now. On the supply chain side, the global semiconductor shortage that began this decade has started to stabilize, However, similar issues are still noted as a possible issue due to factors like international trade tensions, posing potential for delays or disruptions in sourcing parts that could affect production and costs. And technically speaking, serves robots can't operate in extreme weather yet, limiting geographic deployment and uptime. That seems like a fringe factor for now, until you begin to consider the vast potential of robo-delivery during storms, lockdowns, or just plain gloomy days. On a related note, Serves robots implement anti-tampering and theft measures to ensure the safety of their cargo, kind of like mailbox safes on wheels. Then, while automation trends and falling hardware costs favor Serves' long-term prospects, they must still raise significant capital to scale production, improve hardware, and expand operations. Revenue from advertising, although promising, is still unproven, and robot utilization must increase outside the Uber ecosystem. Furthermore, partnerships, Uber-related or not, offer growth opportunities with inherent risks around dependency, performance, and confidentiality. Regardless, Serve and its growing army of robots keeps building promising technology with real-world traction and strong partners. Commercialization, profitability, and scaling won't always be easy. But success can stay in sight by continuing to secure financing, sustain regulatory cooperation, improve robot capabilities, and diversify revenue. Indeed, the multi-billion dollar opportunity presented by last mile in sidewalk delivery automation is highly enticing, especially if costs per delivery can eventually lower to be substantially cheaper than traditional human-based delivery methods. For more on Serve Robotics, other interesting companies, and crypto, follow Ascencore. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.